Hey you guys, welcome to Young Money Investments. In today's video, we're gonna be giving you an introduction into futures trading. In today's video, I wanna to talk to you about the reasons why I believe futures trading is probably one of the best strategies for new traders, why futures are much less complicated than people seem to think they are, what are some of the pros, what are some of the cons, and what are some things you need to be looking for when you're choosing a broker to trade futures. All today on Young Money Investments. All right, you guys, before we get started in today's video, I want to announce the winner from our previous video, the video on Donald Trump and his impeachment and how that will affect the economy. If you haven't checked that video out, there's a link up here as well. After this video, you can also find that out and click that. But the winner from the previous video is none other than Taylor Barnes. I hope I said that right. So Taylor, congratulations on winning a month free of the Young Money Investments private mentorship group. You can actually message me and I will send you the link to get that one month free and be a part of all of my live trades, what I'm doing, where everything's going. You are the winner. Um, in today's video, we are also gonna be doing that. So every single day, and since today is one of the last videos that we're gonna be shooting here in December of 2019, I'm going to do one more giveaway. So if you would like to enter and enroll in getting this, it's a free, free raffle, free drawing for a Young Money Investments private mentorship group. All you have to do is comment down below, be subscribed to the channel, have the bell notification turned on and follow me on Instagram and set, and post a comment. It can be anything. It could be I'm excited for futures. That's literally what you could comment or comment anything else. What are some of your questions you have about futures? What have you learned from trading futures? What are some things? So that is what I want you to comment down below. Now, when it comes to futures trading, this is something that I feel like I am fairly new on. And so this is something that I have spent a ton, a ton of time researching, uh, understanding, learning from a few of my friends that have made six figures trading futures. And it took me a while to really like grasp everything. And I thought, you know what? This gives me the perfect opportunity to then explain everything to others that are going to be newer in this space. And it's kind of cool for me because I haven't had that excitement and that thrill of learning something new in the stock market in a while. But I honestly and truly think futures trading can be some of the best things for you as a new trader or anyone that's literally like me that's been in the stock market for forever. I think futures offers a lot of possibilities. And again, if you've traded futures, comment down below. What are your thoughts? What have you felt? What are some things that you've learned? from trading futures. So how do futures work? Futures are essentially the way to trade commodities. We can trade things like gold, silver, oil. We can trade things like corn and wheat and barley. You can buy futures contracts for the S&P 500. We have the micro minis, we have the mini ES. There are so many different futures or commodities trades in order to make money. Now, what exactly is a futures contract? Well, just like it sounds, you are essentially buying a contract or selling a contract that says that you will purchase X amount of a certain good, for example, corn, in the future on, a, on an end date of that contract for X amount of dollars. Now, one of the cool things with futures trading is that it does not have a lot of the pitfalls that options do. One of the biggest problems with trading options, especially when trading SPY options or options on the S&P 500, is that these options tend to decay in price just over time. Now, if you didn't know, that is the delta that is decaying in that options trade. So essentially, the further out an option that you buy, even if it stays flat, even if it doesn't go you know, anywhere, you're still losing money in an options contract. Whereas with futures, you have all of the premiums, the dividends, all of those things already built into the price of that contract. And so you're not gonna succumb to that time decay that you normally would with an options contract. So basically the best way to understand how stock futures work is to think about items in terms of something tangible. Let's say you own popcorn, for example. A popcorn company, you will need to buy corn to make your product, right? So every business day, the price of corn goes up and down. You must buy corn for the lowest price possible so that you can make the most profit when you sell your finished product. But realize that the price of corn today might be different than it is from a year from now. So you enter into a futures contract with a farmer to buy his corn at a specific price at a certain future date. That is essentially what an options contract is. It is an exchange between the producer of the commodity and the, the person that's going to basically produce the product. And that is basically a contract. And that's honestly and truly how a lot of things are determined. For example, in the aerospace industry, airline companies have to buy fuel prices almost 
years in advance. They agree to buy so many gallons of fuel from the supplier at a certain price. That's how they can lock in ticket prices and have fixed overhead costs that don't fluctuate drastically. That's a big benefit to businesses because then they don't have to worry about a catastrophe that really affects their bottom line and could potentially make them go bankrupt. So now that you know a little bit about what futures are, you need to understand what the pros are and what are the cons of actually trading futures contracts. Some of the biggest reasons that you would want to trade futures is because of the great liquidity. As you can see right here in this current chart, and this is an older base chart, but look how much liquidity there is in the futures market. Literally trillions of dollars are traded on an annual basis. Some numbers I've heard in the realm of a quadrillion dollars are traded in the futures market on an annual basis. Basically looking at the global futures volume here in 2017, there was 25.2 million, sorry, billion contracts that were traded. For example, the ES or S&P 500 contracts each cost $160,000 roughly in today's dollars. Now, if you're wondering how does the price work out and how on earth can you actually trade that, we'll get to that, I promise, but stick with me. So because of the liquidity, it's very easy to get in and out of your positions. One of the other great things about trading futures is that it runs 23 hours a day, six days a week. The sixth day isn't exactly 23 hours, but we'll get to that in just a second. As you can see right here, the mini E NASDAQ 100, which is gonna be very similar or the same as the S&P 500, is traded on the Chicago Mercantri Mercantile Exchange. As you can see, it's open here on Sunday at 5 p.m. and it's open from 5 p.m. to 4 p.m. all other days of the week. So for a lot of people, that's a lot of great news for them because that means that you can trade it literally whenever. But just like stocks, it's gonna be more liquid during normal trading hours, just so you know. One of the other great things about trading futures is that you are able to leverage a large amount into making a lot more money than you can with any other thing. That includes options trading as well. With as little as $500 on brokers like NinjaTrader, you are able to leverage that amount of money and trade a contract that is literally worth like I said, $160,000. Let's turn here to the CME group and this explains to you exactly how leverage works with a futures contract. And as it says, leverage can seem risky, but when used properly, it can be a game changer. Leverage is the ability to control a large contract value with a relatively small amount of capital. In the futures market, that capital is called performance bond or initial margin and is typically three to 12% of a contract's notional value or cash value. Notional value equals cash value. That's something I didn't know at first and that's something you probably wanna know. That's what notional value is, is like the overall value of that uh, contract. So assume that one mini E S&P 500 future has a value of $103,800. You initiate a position by posting an initial margin of at least $5,060. In other words, you have an exposure to $103,800, but have only put down a small percentage of the value. This is called greater capital efficiency. And if you want to know a little bit more about this, just pause this video and you can check out and read all this about the exposure and conclusion and then we'll move on. Now, why is this leverage so important? Honestly and truly, the reason why I believe this leverage is so important and crucial is because it teaches you something at the very beginning of your trading career that you need to know, and that is how to manage risk, how to get into positions, how to get out of positions, and how not to let your losers lose. One of the problems that a lot of traders will end up doing is they end up saving, 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 and building up this nest egg to finally trade with. Once you get that great nest egg though, the problem is, is you end up starting to hold positions, it starts to go down, and you lose very quickly. The cool thing with trading futures is that you can start out with a relatively small amount of capital and can actually start out and learn and take your licks, whether they're good or whether they're bad. You have the liquidity to get in and out of those positions, but you also aren't putting in a huge astronomical amount of money. For example, buying one share of Amazon is gonna cost you over $1,750. The cool thing with trading futures is that you're watching one chart and one chart only. You either care if it's going up or going down or vice versa. You just don't wanna be on the opposite end when the trade's going the way that you don't want it to be. Honestly and truly, I think that is probably the biggest pro is that you can accomplish the very most with the least amount of capital when you are trading futures. And like I said, although it seems very complex, another thing that's very important to know is that one point in a futures contract, especially for example, specifically only in the ES or S&P 500, one point is equal to $50. So roughly speaking, if you took the overall value of whatever it's trading at 
and multiplied it by 50, the, the contract, that's what the overall one contract would actually be. You also need to know that 0.25 is equal to one tick. So in futures trading, 0.25 is one tick and traders will often refer to it as eight ticks up or being two points and vice versa. Two ticks down is equal to half a point. Remember that stuff. You'll need to know it later. So while forward slash ES is $50 per point, gold, for example, or forward slash GS is equal to $100 per point. And although while I cannot understand for the life of me why these are different per different futures, it's just that way and you gotta deal with it for now until they can somehow form a way to make an even balanced basic system. And hopefully one day they'll get to that. But as of now, you just have to understand depending on which futures contract you're trading, it's gonna vary point to point for each type of futures contract you're trading. Now, when it comes to cons, what are some of the cons of trading futures? Well, the first out there is there's not a lot of mentors out there that really teach futures trading. Honestly and truly to find a great futures mentor, I would honestly have no one that I could really recommend. Like I said, I'm learning myself. And so I'm not gonna just recommend that I teach you because I wanna teach you things that I'm really, really good at. And futures trading is something that I'm learning a lot more about and I'm getting good, but I'm not great. The other big complaint I hear about futures trading is that they say it's very complex and yes when you first look into this you go oh my gosh there is so much information the brokerage accounts just seem very complex i don't really know how to do this but i promise you you guys when you first got started trading you probably thought things were kind of complex as well if you take the time to understand how to trade futures it's going to make a lot more sense and i promise you th this just it, it works now you're probably thinking to yourself okay futures there's a contract when is the expiration one of the things you can see right over here is that we have a futures market overview. Here in the chart, you can see the S&P 500 E-mini, you have the Dow Futures Mini, you have the S&P 500 VIX, you have crude oil, natural gas, gold, etc., etc. One of the things you'll notice in each and every one of these, all the way down to coffee even, is an expiration date, which you probably didn't know it was an expiration date. But you see where it says March of 20 or January of 20, February of 20, etc., etc., this is the expiration date of the particular contract that you are trading. So one thing to keep in mind is that you are trading and these contracts have expiration dates. Normally, the closer you are to the expiration date, the closer that current trading price should be to that contract. The other thing you need to know is what margin requirements are required in order to trade S&P or any futures in general. Instead of reading everything, I just want to put you into the important details. And here it says special considerations for future contracts, exchanges set initial margin requirements as low as 5% or 10% of the contract to be traded. For example, if a crude oil futures contract is quoted at $100,000, a futures contract holder can enter a long position by posting only $5,000 initial margin or 5% of the contract value. In other words, this initial margin requirement would give the account holder a leverage factor of 20 times. One of the important things to know is your leverage is determined whether you are trading intraday or swinging and holding overnight. This federal minimum that is set by the federal government of 5% is across the board. Some brokers will do 5%, others will do 10. It just depends on the broker that you're using. The way it differs and can be different is when you're trading intraday, and that's where a brokerage house can set any requirement that they want. That's why, like I said, at Ninja Trader, you're able to actually use a $500 value and trade these futures contracts. Now, with that being said, it is a little bit more risky. You definitely have less of a downside risk that you will end up getting stopped out on and they will actually cover your position if it starts going against you. But with that being said, you have this massive ability to use as little money as $500 to trade the whole ES or the whole S&P 500, which is valued, like I said, probably at about $160,000 right now as we speak. One more thing I forgot to tell you, there is the ES and then there is the mini ES. Now what's cool about the mini ES is it is a smaller fractional share of the overall ES or S&P 500. Cool thing about this one as well is that you can actually trade it with as little as $50 on NinjaTrader. And again, I'm not endorsed, I'm not sponsored by NinjaTrader whatsoever. That is just one of the brokers that I've heard is their favorite broker to use. I plan on maybe starting out with interactive brokers and then I'll probably get a NinjaTrader account. The only problem is they don't have an app or a platform for Mac. And that's my fault or my problem, whatever you want to call it. All right, you guys, and that is the in-depth basis or overview of a futures contract of what a future 
you know, trading futures is, like I said, these are really important things that took me literally like hours and hours and hours and hours of research that I decided to push to you. If you like this content, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. I'd love to have a comment down below. If you haven't, I'd love for you to share this video as well. If you'd love to share it on your Facebook feed or something like that, I would greatly appreciate it. Instagram, something like that. That would be super cool. If not, no worries. Um, and one more thing, like I said, Taylor, you are the winner for today. Like I said, we're going to do one more giveaway for the private mentorship in Young Money Investments University um, in my private mentorship group. If you have not done so already, comment down below, comment something about futures trading, comment something about, you know, I don't know. Give me, give me a comment down below and that will enter you in the giveaway to win the private mentorship for a month of the Young Money Investments University private mentorship group. Can't wait to talk to you guys later. Thanks so much for being here and I will catch you in the next video. Talk to you later. Bye.